Don't we just love GCSEs? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to be revising now, but say la vie. Yeah. Yeah, me too, but oh well. Uh, hello and welcome back to the Avoid the Tire Wall podcast. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, Ollie Stewart. Ollie, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Ollie Stewart and I'm racing in the GB3 Championship this year for Elite Motorsport. So this is like a question that I've like been wondering for a while. And um, how does helmet fitting work? Like, how do you go about it? Um. Well, it's it's quite a easy process, I guess. Well, for me, I went to the Grand Prix Racewear um, shop at Silverstone, and I just tried on each of the helmets, small, medium, and large, and just saw what fits. Um, different companies have different sizes. So Bell have, I think, um, fifty one to sixty, um, and you you can just choose whichever ones are bigger, but. Um, if for RI, which is the helmet I use, you have um extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of the time. Um, for me, because I've got quite a thin face but a pretty big head. Um, I've got a large helmet, but I've got really thick cheek pieces because, like, if not, the helmet moves around a lot, and if that's happening, then that's obviously not a good thing. Is it true? Right, I don't know how because I saw this on Twitter. Um, but. Is it true that the helmets are actually the same size? It's just to do with the pad it, the padding inside. Um, yes, to for for most helmets. Um, I know that like if you were to get a carbon fiber helmet, then yes, they are the same. But a lot of the fiberglass helmets are slightly different. Um, the so the extra small and the small shell is the same for an RI helmet, but the medium and large are different but they're medium and large are the same as each other but there's a difference just as you get to the medium point um and i think yeah it's just mainly the padding and the foam inside that makes it closer to your head yeah i wasn't expecting extra small and extra large to be the same size no no but yeah i mean for some helmets i think for the stilo helmet they're all the same so the extra small and the extra large are actually the same size but they've got really thin um foam in the in in the helmet to so it's actually quite a bit lighter so why did you choose to do gb3 as opposed to something like formula regional or the new euro cup three i think it's called yeah um well it's it seemed like the the best option for us at the time um my dad has managed a driver called lewis williamson um who raced in up all the way up till 3.5 world series in in red bull and when he was in formula renault 2.0 he raced in a team called Manor Competition. And in Manor, there was an engineer called Sarah and then there was Tony Shaw as well. Um, and yeah, now in Elite Motorsport this year, it's the same. So they're going to be, they, uh, Sarah is my my engineer and Tony is my teammate's engineer. So, you know, my dad knew them from the past and knew how much skills they had and how and overwhelming they were as an engineer. So... Yeah, it just felt very suiting. This is a, like a, a sort of question that I've just been thinking about. But so we know like W Series has gone off the face of the earth because I can't think of a better yeah. way to put it. Do you think it would be beneficial for W Series to join like the SRO package or like the Toka package as opposed to being on the F1 calendar because it would be cheaper, I imagine, than being with F1? Um. Yeah, if they'd thought of that a year ago, then yes. Um, obviously, the F1 package provides a lot of coverage for them, so it gives them a lot of exposure and promotes it a lot. But however, um, I know Toka obviously streams on ITV4, so so that gives them coverage as well. And then obviously the GT streams on YouTube. However, um, now the F1 Academy is out, I think that it would be nearly impossible for women's series to compete with that. So um yeah it's it's definitely a, a a topic you could go far into however if they yeah as i said if they thought of that two years ago or a year ago then yeah definitely it would have been a, a good way to go and i feel like it could maybe like because i know i go to the gb3 i've gone every year for the like past three years and i will probably end up going to donnington for the last round in the yeah. blistering cold um <laughs> brave in it uh but 
I think because quite a lot of like family orientated people are there so maybe mm. if they had have thought about it as you said a couple of years ago they could have got like more young girls like because I'm 16 and so I can't drive but I would like to have been in the position where I could maybe test a W series car and obviously it was free to enter so I think they should have just thought about it differently yeah yeah absolutely I would I would I would agree with that this is a really weird question uh, okay. what's your workout plan like um okay well I was at the gym today um so it, it's it's very difficult because obviously I'm away a lot so it does get interrupted um but I just try and work around it the best I can so what I will do is on a Monday I will do um my chest workout and triceps um first so that'll just be like cable flies um and then um tricep push downs and then uh tricep dips and just yeah everything we do to train train chest mainly um and then the tuesday would be probably legs um legs and shoulders because shoulders are very difficult to fit in as well um weird combination but it works um, and then, yeah, I do neck usually as well, all every day and that I'm in the gym. Um, but there's not many machines that you can really do anything with your neck on, just simply because not many people really care about training your neck. But obviously, as a racing driver, it's important. Um, and then, yeah, the Wednesday, I, or whenever I can fit it in, would be um, I do my biceps and back. Um, and then the rest of the days, probably on the weekends, I would do uh, maybe a... 20 mile cycle or 13 mile run or 14 mile run or whatever just to for to maintain cardio levels um and yeah that that seems to work but obviously dietary as well is very important did i hear that right 30 mile run no oh no no 13 to 14 oh. mile run i was gonna say bloody hell 30 miles is impressive yeah 20 to 25 mile cycle probably is or oh. either or I was like, oh my yeah. God, could have just done the, That's more the marathon. Than marathon. That's more than the marathon. Yeah. Like one of those ultra sparkly marathons. I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, well, like, yeah, ultra marathons. Yeah. Does not sound like my idea of fun, personally. No, no, I think that's a bit too far. <laughs> uh, how does being a part of the SRO package with GB3 differ to being a part of the TOKA package with obviously British F4? Um, well, I've noticed that there's a lot of, um, it's, it's good to have very good coverage throughout every race because obviously, um, in the, in the token package, you used to only get one race or sometimes two on a rare occasion, um, streamed on ITV. Um, and yeah, that was a lot more coverage than YouTube. However, YouTube's easily more easily accessible for everyone. You can watch it away from home or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, I feel like the coverage is is better because, um, as I said, every race is is like is streamed. So so that's one positive. Um, but yeah, the the this package obviously is a, is a change from Toka, and it's it's very interesting um, to see the differences and how everything's working. Um, yeah, it's I'd say that. Obviously, touring cars is known to be quite a lot of carnage everywhere. Everyone's just flying off the track and into the barriers. So the fans like that a lot. So Toka just depend tends to be a really, really, really busy weekend. Um, but yeah, GTs is I I think is 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 better for me just because I enjoy looking at the the nice cars that, that there are. And obviously, there's a lot of rich people there as well. So it's quite interesting to hear the names of people, people that own like Dyson or Karcher and all different types of brands. So yeah, it's, uh, the package is, is very interesting. And yeah, not only that, on both packages, I've realized that the, the time you're in the car is like not very much and it's so spread out. Um, I think at Oton Park, we had one race um, on the Saturday nothing on the Sunday and then on the Monday it was like one in the morning and one at like three o'clock so it was you know everything is very spread out so you find yourself twiddling with your friends for between each race um but no they're they're both very well run packages yeah I was watching the touring cars this week actually and it was just 
who's going off then she's going off then he's pinging into a wall <laughs> over there it was just like oh crikey um but like because obviously the genetas have moved to the sro package do you think that's contributed to like the spreading out of it because it felt like there wasn't a lot on at the touring cars despite there being i'm not sure how many races there were but there were quite a few yeah of course but i had the uh, but i was at the toka package and it was yeah extremely busy weekends there was so many fans sometimes you were getting 50 to sixty thousand, um which is more attendance than a premier league match the average premier league match so it's uh it's pretty amazing to have that many people, but also it, it, you found it difficult to to drive through the paddock and all that kind of thing because there was just fans everywhere and you didn't want to run anyone down. So, you know, at this at this it's a bit easier to to maneuver about the place. Um, people are are more obliged to move out of the way, so, so that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, as you said, in touring cars, it's just complete carnage. Everyone's going off everywhere. Um, and Jeanette's is, is is the same, really. It's, it's brilliant racing in Jeanette's because everyone can drive really close. There's barely any dirty air to worry about. So so that's obviously very good. Um, but, but yeah, uh, it's definitely because of Jeanette's and me moving to GB3, it's definitely uh, crowded up the, the paddock a lot and uh, made us our races really far apart, which obviously gives us a bit of time to debrief and, and to think about and go again for the next race so sometimes you can go in with a really have a really bad race and then you can go in with a completely fresh head and and go again and it works so yeah quite a few advantages yeah i when i i mean when i was at alton park a when i was on the B, uh the british gt grid nearly got run over by the safety car so i was taking <laughs> a photo of ainsley which was you know he did save me so love him forever <laughs> um then like I just nearly got run over by like a couple of the Jeanetta drivers and I was a bit like, ooh crap, whoops. And it wasn't when they were in the cars, it was when they were on a golf cart, which... Oh, yeah, I saw that. Should the drivers from like the different countries within the UK, so Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, be able to have an, be, be able to have a racing licence from that country rather than having it from the UK? Um, no, this is very difficult because... For me, no, because there's only really one track in Scotland you can race at, being not Hill. So I don't really think it would make much of a difference. If anything, it's easier that I've got a Motorsport UK licence. Um, however, for Wales, you've got Anglesey, Pembury, and then in Ireland, obviously, you've got karting tracks like Nats Corner and everything like that. So obviously, there's plenty of tracks out in, in Ireland. I think there's only there's four karting tracks in Scotland. Um, being Lark Hall, uh, Banff, Galsby, and Crail. Uh, so, but obviously in England there's like 20, 30. So, yeah, it's it's good to have a license that's very. It makes it accessible to go down to to England. Um, and it's I, I feel like it's going to be very dependent on the political state of of Scotland at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's not really too much of a thing I've been worried about. I think it's it's perfectly fine to have a motorsport UK license. Plus, if push comes to shove, you could just like have a little embroidered little flag, rather than having the Union Jack have like a little Scottish one by your name on your. Yeah, scoop. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what it would end up being. I don't know if this right. So I think this is a bit vague. This question, and it's what do you think's the most fun type of race car to drive? But like for context, like I enjoy watching the Janetta Juniors because they just mm -hmm. don't give a shit and they just go for it. But then like yeah. and like in Formula E, they just kind of go for it. But then in F1, they're like, oh, my car, it's it's delicate. Oh, crikey, he's just come at <laughs> yeah. me. Um, so like if you've not raced it, you can still say it, is what I'm gonna say. Okay. Um so for me, the best cars to drive, no question would be obviously now it's banned so i can't i couldn't do it anyway the group c car um so a group c car or an f1 car would absolutely be the best cars to drive but the best cars to race would probably be Jeanette juniors just because you can go so close you can bash about or even any really car that you can um any tin top car that you can get close in so minis is good um Jeanette's is good but Pro yeah, probably Jeanette's for racing, because it's just like racing a go-kart. Go-karts on acid. Yeah, 
basically yeah i think you know if i could drive if i could drive b if i could be a racing driver i'd want to have a go at you know and le mans that's a big one for me yeah absolutely yeah that's what i meant with the group c car yeah. i'd love to drive one around le mans just amazing what is your dream road car dream road oh oh uh Oh, very difficult one because there's obviously cars coming out all the time. Uh, Can we do sports car and then like practical everyday family car? Okay. Um, so by everyday family car, this might sound stupid, but technically it is a family car. Um, a Brabus GLA G wagon because they are just amazing they look they look amazing they're so fast and yeah just unreal um but as a supercar hypercar sports car i'd probably go with a chronic seg jesco i thought you're gonna say i thought you're gonna go f40 for the supercar which i would not have slandered you for because it's a beautiful car and then i thought you were saying dbx you didn't ask me classic you didn't ask me classics i would have gone for f40 if you'd say this classic okay new column classics yeah probably the f4e they always have one at donnington park for the last round and it's red and it's gorgeous and i would just i just want one of them just to say i can have one and you know the pink porsche 911 oh my god well I'd also, that's what I was going to say. In classics, it would be between an F40 or an old 911 because they're just, yeah, amazing. I'm going to add another question here, and the answer could be controversial Porsche or Porsche? No, Porsche, any day. It's not Porsche. Good. What gives you the determination to race? Um. Well, Do you mean determination to win or determination to get on track? Uh, Right, I'm going to give a situation and it's hypothetical and like, God forbid that it happened, but you have like a DNF in one of your races and then you have like an absolute stinker of a race too. But then like race three, you're like, oh, you know, I've had a crap weekend. I don't want to go and I like, I don't want to, you know, maybe disappoint my family or something. So, like, what would make you go, yeah, I'm going to still go, even if I've had a bad day? Um, Well, not only does racing mean everything to me, but um, it's never easy for, well, any family, but especially us, because we don't have the money that many rich businessmen do for for their sons. There's a lot of people out there that have, like, billions or multi-millions and... We definitely don't have that. So, yeah, one of the main things that motivates me is the fact that everyone's put all their trust and faith into me um, and given me so many opportunities. So, you know, it means the world to me and I definitely would let anything go. So no matter how bad a weekend I would have, I just make sure I keep the head down and do the absolute best that I possibly can to my ability and then I can't be disappointed in myself. So if I've had if I'd had a crap weekend, then no matter what, I'm going to do my absolute damnedest to, to bring it back. and and uh, do everyone that's supporting me proud. That's the main thing that keeps me going and motivated. This is another question that I've just come up with. So obviously you said, you know, you, you're you like not like Lance Stroll, who's got billions and billions. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't even remember how much his dad is worth, but it's like, a, oh my God, amount of money. So Absolutely. what do you think can be done to make motorsports cheaper or more accessible? Now, this is very difficult because um, there's many things that theoretically could be done, but you would need to find the right people to do it, and it's obviously very difficult to find that. Um, Well, entry-level karting, I know it's obviously not even in the ballpark compared to what it is now in cars. However, um, yeah, like it would be just people someone with a lot of money or someone with a big business just to 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 invest money into the youth and like and like for example if you were good enough to, they did talent spotting and an academy in karting just to and if you're in that academy then they help fund your way through 
karting, that would just be unreal for everyone because even in karting levels, there's people that are spending over a hundred thousand pounds a year, which is pretty unreal. We were nowhere near that, but there's lots of people spending way over that. Sometimes even touching 200, 300,000. It's just amazing. So yeah, to, it's obviously very difficult to compete with people like that. If you, if you don't have the money to do it. Um, so yeah, just a big businessman to, or a bit multi businesses just to come in and invest into the, to the youth to give them opportunities because, at the moment for people like me and for other people the only opportunities we've got is by like destroying everyone um so that's almost what i'm gonna have to do to, if i want to progress any further in motorsport which is what we're aiming for and that's why it means so much to us all so yeah definitely um someone with a business to invest would be the ultimate thing that would make it cheaper yeah i was going to ask about the carton and i'm glad that you brought it up because I like read somewhere and it was like, if you want to go and do European karting, I'm not sure how many weekends a year it is. I'm not sure how many races. I'm not that big into karting. How much does it cost for however long? Um, Yeah. Like how, how do you get to spend in 300 grand on carts? Well, we've obviously never been near that. So it's hard for me to say that. But what I will say is to how you get to spending a lot of money in carting would be, um, well, for, for me, for example, I had three engines when I was in carting and I had one chassis and then obviously you put new tires on when necessary. But there would be people in carting with about 15 engines, three chassis, new tires in every session, the best of the best engines and then at any point they didn't think they were great they'd you know put them back and get them to retune them and retune them and then if they saw anyone that was really fast they'd just throw all the money at an engine sometimes i remember there was a honda cadet engine which is literally you can get out of a lawnmower that people were selling for twenty thousand pounds so when you get to levels like okay in senior people are spending even more than that and you know, if people if you buy all it takes is to buy three of those engines and you're already touching a hundred thousand nearly. Um three of those engines, carts and all sorts, and then obviously racing for the year because each weekend you've got your mechanics to pay, the team boss to pay, your entry fees, your tires, your fuel, engines, anything you've hired, uh, and then obviously your helmet and suit and everything. So but not only that, you've got to pay the team to transport the cart there and from. So some people just decide they'll test in Spain one week, Italy the next, France the next, Germany the next, you know, just everywhere. So, yeah, just it's just unbelievable that there's it's basically limitless. Crikey, that's expensive. Yeah, it's just unreal. Yeah, I'm on this Facebook thing called Karting Armchair Experts, and it's weird, but it's like people sell like old cart chassis for like a lot of money, and I'm like like babes why is that so expensive yeah i think that and um, to buy like a new cart for say any of the junior classes or the senior classes if you were to buy a new cart without an engine it's about three and a half to four thousand pounds and then you have to buy the engine on top of that the tires and pay for the fuel your entry fees so it's definitely not a sport for someone with a lot of money but with with no money basically um so yeah I don't know why we're in this sport. <laughs> yeah, like actually, I was gonna say horse riding, but like horse riding's expensive. Go to like swimming, even though some of those suits for swimming are like, you know, like really fancy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a link into the like the price of racing. So obviously, W Series was free to enter, and I'm a woman in motorsports. Spoiler alert. Yeah. So like, do you think that you know? Obviously, they had a good idea. But do you think they maybe should have said, look, we need like, I don't know, I just ballpark figure 50 grand for you to enter this series or maybe somewhat like less to go and stay afloat? Um, Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, as women um, in motorsport is quite, a, it's not a new thing, but it's growing as it is in every sport um obviously women in gymnastics has been going on for a while and tennis and whatnot but it's building in football in basketball in motorsport especially so yeah people are seeing that and i know quite a few people that have had obviously big opportunities just simply because of the fact that 
you know, everyone wants to invest in, in a girl because it's it's something that seems um unordinary because it's it's a new thing. So, you know, people are trying to um they want to build on that and make it something big and almost to compete with the men. So yeah, it's definitely the um women's series was a massive opportunity and it would be great for someone like me to to have an opportunity like that but unfortunately there's just not many of those floating about you've got to just basically destroy everyone to to get even a hint of something like that so um yeah it's it's an um it was an unbelievable series and the f1 academy this year as well is unbelievable um it's extremely cheap for for what they're getting racing uh, everywhere and getting it even in with the f1 package at some points so yeah um yeah it's definitely definitely something that's that's helping them a lot and helping grow women in motorsport uh getting back on track again uh <laughs> who do you look up to in motorsport or just in general um both okay um in general i look up to my dad because he puts in countless hours at work all the time um he's just non-stop working just simply to even get me on the grid so he's extremely passionate about everything and he just wants me to do the best i possibly can and i want myself to do the best i possibly can so yeah i absolutely look up at him and yeah he's extremely um well qualified in, within motorsport himself um he's an electrician but he's been he's raced himself he's managed drivers you know so so it's always good to, and he knows his stuff so just to listen to him um but within racing um very difficult one probably Nicky Lauda because the fact that he put in so much effort at all times and then he crashed out and within 30 days of being in a 750 degree blaze he was back in a car so that's pretty amazing and quite an inspiring story I didn't realize it was 750 degrees yeah, okay. it was. Yeah, the the blaze was seven hundred fifty degrees or something. They said, I I believe that's right. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, down. we've got nine and a half minutes left, but we probably that's won't fine. be finished in nine and a half minutes. So yeah. if when we like run out of time, if you just press the same link again, it'll rejoin you to the Zoom. Yeah. But if you need to like leave, we can finish a bit earlier. No, that's okay. Yeah. Uh. Who would be your dream teammate? And they can be dead or alive. Obviously, if they're dead, they are, like, you know, resurrected of some sort because some people uh, yeah. don't seem to realise that's what I mean. And they can be from any series. Okay, so dream teammate. Yeah, so as if, if it was uh, two people in one team. Okay. Um, It's hard to say. Um, you'd obviously you'd want a driver that's gonna push you along, um, and be as close as possible. Someone that's really fast, but then you wouldn't. I guess you wouldn't want someone that's. Well, actually, it's hard to say. Um, probably someone like Lewis Hamilton or Michael Schumacher. Either that, or you'd want a teammate that's absolutely crazy in the head, so that if a driver ever hit you, then they just go mental and go back at them. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, I'd probably a fast driver like Hamilton or Schumacher. Did you see Lewis was at the uh, the touring car? Yeah. I was I, like I knew it. I knew it. I saw I saw um I saw a live stream on Instagram of someone that was a fan at Donington and I saw like them walking past who I I was like, oh that's Lewis Hamilton hundred percent because you could tell by the way he was standing what he was wearing, like the pink shoes and yeah. everything. I just knew it was him, and then he revealed it after he left. So, I yeah. nearly, nearly went to Donington at on Sunday, and I was just—I should have gone. Football. Uh, and I'm really sorry if I butcher this nut. No, this next one. Yeah. How did you get involved with a Richard Mille, young Richard driver? Mille, yeah, that's it's close. Oh. Uh, so I was in. The I raced for Jade Racing Team in karting in twenty twenty one, um, and for Jade Racing Team they were on a Burwell ART chassis, 
And basically, the Bariliarity Factory team is sponsored by Richard Mille, and they're collaborated. So, yeah, so as they're collaborated, um, what the opportunity was that the top 12 drivers within a barrel chassis from all around the world would get the opportunity to drive an F4 car. And I was selected from the UK. So we went to Navarra in Spain and tested the car um on the wednesday and basically the, the and we did but on the monday we did like an introduction um on the tuesday we did they did um media kind of thing like they uh we got interviewed and whatnot we did fitness tests and then we also did um a mental test as well so like mental strength uh your concentration levels your reaction times that kind of thing um which i did really well in those those categories but then obviously i'd never been out in an f4 car um, and a lot of the drivers that were there, in fact, every single one of them, except from two, had been in a car before for at least two weeks. Some had even raced in a championship for a full season. So, you know, it was I was really, really up against it. Um, and the first time I went out in the car, I was like 10 seconds off. So obviously just getting used to it. Um, but then after that, I kept building up and getting better and better and better. And I was really close to the front by the end of it. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't quite good enough to win it. Um, but the winner of the shootout, uh, Timit Kucharzik, um, he's racing this year against me in GB3, so it'll be good to uh, to to compare myself to him and see how far I've come. Yeah. All right, this is a really weird question as well. What age did you learn to drive? Do you mean like race? Yeah, like so, like obviously, you know, seventeen is the legal for the UK. Yeah. But yeah. like, when did you first learn how to gear change? etc um not kill but well i did kz carring which is gearbox so it's carring with gears so that that was like the first time obviously you change gear or whatever and it's got hand clutch like this so like an f1 car um but yeah the first time i learned to actually drive was I think I was 12, 13, or something like that. Um, first time I learned to drive an actual car. Um, and it was at Knock Hill. So it was like a thing that they did, like an expedition. And I got to drive it around Knock Hill a wee bit for a couple of laps. And yeah, that was just my first time driving it with the gear stick and everything. But it was really, I really enjoyed it. Is it like one of those like young driver things? Like they, I know they do them at Alton Park because they just changed a load of minis to a load of BMWs. So is it like one of them? Um, mm, well, it was kind of, we went down there so we, that I would be prepared for, like, if we were going to move to take the next step into to racing, um, to, to racing cars. So I just kind of, we went down there so I could get a feel for it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's quite annoying because I still have to wait another year until I get my road license. So if you could add one track to the GB3 calendar, which would you choose? Oh, uh, this is also a very difficult question because I would love to race around Monaco and I think everyone would love to go there, but it would be quite a boring race. Obviously, not much would happen. So, um, probably Macau. And race I know that's choice. sometimes also a boring race, but it's just an amazing track to drive just unreal i've driven on the same loads of times and watched races and it's just amazing but they actually did do like the f3 cup there they stopped doing it but i think it was like 2020 2019 and schwarzman pulled it i think i watched the onboard of that lap and it was pretty amazing um so yeah like it would be good to do that at the end of the year or something like that so yeah probably macau i'd add Whenever anyone talks about Macau, I just get flashbacks of that massive pile up that was. I'm pretty sure it was Macau, where GT. like one car and they just. Pew, pew. Was it the GTs where yeah. like about 20 cars piled up? Yeah. yeah. That was like two and a half million pounds worth of damage or something within that pile up. Crikey. It was yeah. pretty whack to see, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, it was. Alternatively, if you could remove one track. Which would it be? Uh, I'm not sure because 
that, there's not many that, but there's still a few tracks that haven't been round in the GB3 so there's some might, that, that might not be so good um, Snetterton is would be a very good track if the surface was grippier because it's so sliding it just doesn't feel very nice but it's a good track like the corners are good so that could be one um that and open park open park's an amazing track to drive it's just so fun and enjoyable but it's just not cut out we're just too fast for the track the f3 cars are far too quick alton park is like my home circuit so i'm I'm because i did say it was an unbelievable track just yeah. not for anything because i've I think, excluding in the wet conditions, I think there was only one driver who managed to overtake in the dry. And then after that, it's just like nose to tail the whole time. You just can't do anything, you know, unless the driver in front of you makes a really bad mistake. But because the GB3 championship is such a high level, barely anyone makes mistakes. So it's it's not easy. Right. So would like what is the consequence for overtaking the safety car? So... If you are a lap behind, you can, as you saw, everyone saw in 2021 with the whole Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton issue, if you're a lap, they may let you pass. And also they don't, we don't have radios, so it's very difficult to say. Um, Now, it's not entirely, it's like factual what the penalty is if you, um, if you overtake under a safety car, because you could be, um, you could maybe the safety car was stopped and you didn't see it or whatever. Um, but yeah, a lot of the clerk of the course could say that you thought you were allowed or whatever. So you could get a one lap penalty, a drive through penalty, or a complete full exclusion. But it would be one of the higher penalties. It wouldn't be like a five second penalty. You would get a major penalty. I think usually it's a drive through or one lap or a full exclusion. It's, it's not. It's not a sad penalty. Um. But yeah, the the whole way through Open Park, everyone the commentators seemed to think I was John Bennett because I was racing. They're like, "Oh, what a brilliant move by John Bennett round the outside at Druids." Oh, John Bennett's in the gravel. Oh, John Bennett's got back going, and it's like, "No, John Bennett's behind you. It's nowhere near you. <laughs> it's on there." Because <laughs> our cars are very similar, though, so it's very easy to say. And also, I'm seventeen; he's number twenty-seven. And it's yellow and black cars, both of us. So ah. I can see why the mistake was made, but it was quite funny. Maybe deliver them a program and like have you circled. Yeah. So maybe it was me who overtook the safety car. I just don't know. <gasps> dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, do you think that GB3 drivers are more mature or cautious than British F4 drivers? Because on the weekend, um, let's just say it was a bit hectic. It's extremely dependent on certain drivers because what I will say is there's on a whole GB3 drivers are probably more mature yes but also there's F4 graduates who are have come into it that weren't so mature and also there's obviously just there's there's how do you politely say um idiots amongst every category in racing um and i'm sure people some people think the same about me within it so you know um yeah there's there's definitely as a whole gb3 is more mature and open park is carnage in every category just because everyone's desperate to try and even get one overtake because it's nearly impossible that no one can even wait if you get the opportunity you go for it because you'll probably never get it again um so yeah there does tend to be a lot of crashes and like there was um, but yeah, on a whole, GB3 is more mature, I'd say. <clears throat> Fair enough. Um, it's the general knowledge quiz now. In which country was the title Grand Prix first used? France. Correct. No one gets yeah. that. And I don't know why. I thought that was obvious. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, so did I. Um. At the 2008 Turkish Grand Prix, which d- record did Rubens Barrichello break, which has since been broken by Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso? Most race starts. Correct. There we go. Uh, how many titles did Fangio win? Uh, oh, we go. Uh, uh, four. Incorrect. 
five. I'll give you half a point. I knew it was four or five. It was in 51, 54, 55, 56, and 57. Okay, yeah. Which is very impressive because it was F1 was super dangerous at that time. Yeah. Which team was Jensen Button driving for when he won his title in 2009? Wrong. Oh, correct. <laughs> um, which three races make up the triple crown of motorsports? Le Mans, uh... Indy 500, and is it Monaco? Correct. Who's the only driver to have ever won the Triple Crown? Oh, I know this as well. Uh, it's going to annoy me because I'm going to forget and then I'm going to punch myself. Uh, clue. If I'm allowed, I'll take a clue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, right. It's smaller than a mountain, the surname. Smaller than a mountain. And they're normally grassy. I that get that didn't help me. But I think I remember who it is. But now that I'm now I remember who it is, I realised that it would have helped me. Uh is it Graham Hill? Yeah. Yeah. I quite like my clue. I think it's quite That was quite a good one, but I, it didn't uh, it didn't help me. <laughs> How many father-son duos have won an F1 title? How many father-son? Ooh. Um, so, teaser, uh, that's going to be difficult. Do you want, like, a hint? Did you give the person who got 9 out of 10, did you give them hints? Yeah, probably. Okay, well then I'll take another hint. The hint doesn't dock any points, so Okay. Um, no, I'll take so you've taught you've said one in one of the previous questions, and then someone else is on Sky Sports F1. I feel like I've just given the answer away and I did not mean to. Whoops. No, there's 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 so many though. Um because obviously in Sky Sports F1 you've got uh Crofty, Paul Darista, uh, Okay, right. I've got a better clue. Okay, uh, okay. Right, okay. Do you think you have an answer? Because I can't give the clue away without it saying the answer. Okay, so I named one of them. Okay, so there's... Is there... Is Nelson Piquet one of them? No, because no, his son never really. won the title. Well, his brother Nelson Piquet. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, okay. Fangio. No. I'm not, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, oh. You know what? Is uh, Graham Hill. That is one of the... Okay, right. And then, yeah. yeah, so that's one. And yeah. there is more. I'm not saying how many more. But the other... the One of the people of one of the other pairs was actually not allowed in the F1 paddock because he had not been vaccinated. And people on harp on about the fact that he beat his teammate in equal machinery. And it's a bit of a meme. Wait, did... <sighs> That's happened so many times. It's like... Wait, wait, a... wait. I think, I think I have an answer. Uh, is... No. Oh, I know one. Kiki Rosberg, Nico Rosberg. Yeah, correct. They're the only two that have won it. Ah, so I did get it in the end. <laughs> I was going to say Monaco-based YouTuber, but I didn't. So I feel yeah. like not many people would understand that reference. Yeah, probably not. Which record does Nico Hulkenberg hold? Is it... Is it most teams race for? No. Um, 
most F1 start career starts without a podium. Ah, okay. What's Ferrari's nickname? The Fossey. No. No, no, no. The Prancing Horse. There's... Correct. Yeah. I'll yeah, give you the point for that. Did I say the Fossey? That was the fans. <laughs> Can you name That's the fans' nickname? So technically, I was right. Can you but name I'll... this track? <sighs> yeah, Alton Park. Uh, yes, correct. So you got eight and a half. Eight and a half. I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode of the Avoid the Tile podcast and thank you to Ollie for agreeing to do this interview. See you next week. Bye.